Hi everyone, thanks for having us. Today, I'm going to talk about our paper, Computing Optimal Decision Sets with Set. First, let's talk about the problem. The world has been changed by recent rapid advances in machine learning. Most machine learning algorithms are opaque, unable to explain why decisions were made. As machine learning is increasingly used to help make decisions, there is a demand for these decisions to be explainable. Arguably, the most explainable machine learning models use decision rules. This paper focuses on decision sets, a type model with another rules, which explains each decision with a single rule. Let's look at the example. There are four features and eight items here. A very decision set for this data for the class H would be this. If L is true, then class H is false. If L is false and C is false, then class H is true. If C is true, then class H is false. Also, in order to be easy for humans to understand, this loose must be concise. We consider a better measure compared to early work, namely the total size of the decision set in terms of the literals. The size of the decision set is 7. We provide the first approach to build decision sets by directly minimizing the size required to describe them. The iterative set model and mass set model can build perfect decision sets that match the training data exactly. Or the mass set model can build sparse decision sets that trade off accuracy on training data for size. To assess the proposed set based approach, a number of state of the art algorithms were additionally considered, including the heuristic methods CN2 and Ripper. They don't guarantee any optimality and their closest competitor set based minimal decision sets, but they first optimize the number of rules and afterward the number of literals. The max set based approach in it is also considered. They minimize the number of literals given some number of rules, but the only one to minimize the total number of literals. The figure shows that the winner of testing scalability is Reaper, which is able to train the most considered data sets. Our sparse model ran second. However, the worst approach is our perfectly accurate decision sets. Regarding the testing accuracy, our perfectly accurate decision sets beat other approaches, and our sparse decision sets run fourth. The worst accuracy is demonstrated by CN2. Finally, from the perspective of interpretability, the winner is our sparse model. It's not surprising that perfectly accurate decision sets in general tend to be larger. Thanks for listening. Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk about our paper, Computing Optimal Decision Sets Reset. Let's move to the introduction. The world has been changed by recent rapid advances in machine learning. Most machine learning algorithms are opaque, unable to explain why decisions were made. As machine learning is increasingly used to make decisions, there's a demand for these decisions to be explainable. Arguably, the most explainable machine learning models use decision rules. In this paper, we focus on classification problems, where the input is a set of instances with features and a class. Decision sets are selected in this paper. There are type of model with another rules which explain each prediction with a single rule. For example, the decision set can be this. If little a is true and little b is true, then class is true. The contributions of this paper are the first approach to building optimal decision sets in terms of the total number of literals required to define the entire set. Alternate set and mass set models to tackle this problem and sparse variations which allow an accuracy versus size trade-off. Digital experimental results show in the applicability of this approach, which demonstrates that our best approach can generate optimal sparse decision sets quickly with accuracy comparable to the best heuristic methods, but much smaller. We assume standard definitions for propositional satisfiability maximum satisfiability solving. 
a propositional formula is said to be in conjunctive normal form. CNF is a conjunction of clauses. A clause is a disjunction of literals. A literal is either a Boolean variable or is negation. For example, the clause of literal 1 is true or literal 2 is false needs to be true and literal 3 needs to be true. In the context of unsatisfiable formulas, the massive problem is to find a true assignment that maximizes the number of satisfied clauses. It will be mostly interesting in partial rating method. The formula in MATLAB problems can be represented as a conjunction of hard clauses and soft clauses. Hard clauses must be satisfied, and soft clauses each with an array, representing a preference to satisfy those clauses. We consider a set of features f from f1 to fk. All the features are assumed to be binary. Hence, a little on the feature fr can be represented as fr on negative fr, donating the feature fr is true or false. The complete space of feature varies is u, which is all possible combination of features. The standard classification scenario is assumed, in which one is given training data e, including all data instances. Each data instance is a true tuple, including the set of features values and the class. Let's look at the example. There are four different features and A instances here. Each data instance has four features and one class. Let's move to rating work. Interpretable decision sets are a loop based predictive model that can be traced at least to CN2. To the best of our knowledge, the first logic based approach to the problem of decision set inference was proposed in 1992. Later, Decision sets were considered that a more explainable alternative to decision trees and decision risk in 2016. An interactive set model was constructed to learn minimal decision sets in terms of the number of rules in 2018. The set-based approach was also shown to extensively outperform the heuristic approach of CN2. In 2018 and 2019, the massive model was defined for binary classification. The authors consider a model that minimizes a linear combination of size and handling loss to control the trade-off between accuracy and interpretability. Let's move to the encoding. We provide the first approach to build decision sets by directly minimizing the size required to describe them. The iterative set model and method model can build perfect decision sets that match the training data exactly. Or the method model can build sparse decision sets that trade off accuracy on training data for size. Before presenting our encoding, we need to explain the concept of nodes. Nodes are important in our model. For simplicity, we assume a decision set to be a sequence of nodes. It's defining a literal. Some nodes are marked as leaves to separate the loops in the decision set. In the decision set example, there are four nodes and each of them represents a literal in the decision set. Each leaf node is the end of the loop. Therefore, there are two loops in the example. We first design a set model which determines whether there exists a decision set of a given size n. To find the minimum n, we then iterate call this set model while incrementing n until it's satisfied or a time limit is reached. The encoding using a number of Boolean variables. As JR means no J is a literal on F. F belongs to a feature or a class. TJ is the value of the literal for no J. VIJ means item I is value at no J. The iterative set model is constructed by the following constraints. A node uses only one feature or the class feature. The last node is a leaf. All examples are vary at the first node. An example EI is vary at node J plus 1 if and only if node J is a leaf node. For the example is vary at node J and agree on the value of feature selected for that node. 
if example EI is varied at a leaf node J, they should agree on the class feature. The last constraint for the model is, for every example, there should be at least one leaf literal where it's valid. Let's look at an example. There are eight items, four features, and one class here. A valid decision set for this data for the class H would be this. If L is true, then class H is false. If L is false and C is false, then class H is true. If C is true, then class H is false. Also, in order to be easy for humans to understand, these rules must be concise. Here we can see the better measure compared to early work, namely the total size of the decision set in terms of literals. So we are not driven to a small set of rules which require a large number of literals. In this case, the size of the decision set is 7. Rather than using the described iterative set-based model, which iterates over varying size n of the target decision set, we can allocate a predefined number of nodes, which serves as an upper bound of the optimal solution, and formulate a massive problem minimizing the number of nodes used. However, the model is still used iteratively in the worst case, when the predefined size n is unsatisfiable. Apart from the variables in the iterative set model, there's one extra boolean variable, uj, which means no j is unused. The hard cross is considered the constraint 3 to 6 that have been previously introduced. Additionally, there are some extra constraints. A no either decides a feature or a class or is unused. If a no j is unused, then so are all the following nodes. The last use node is a lift. As for the optimization criterion, we maximize the sum of our use nodes, which can be represented as a list of sort crosses. A convenient feature of minimal decision sets is the following. Separating models are the model constructing the union of minimal decision sets that each of them only classifies the instances of one class. For example, if the training examples have two classes, one decision set only classifies the rules of class 1, the other decision set only classifies the rules of class 2. The final decision set is the union of the two decision sets. Also, the separating model supports multi-classification. Clearly, the separating models are not much smaller than the complete model. We can construct a separating set model by simply restricting constraint set to only apply to examples in M of the appropriate class in both iterative set models and mass set models. Also, we restrict leaf nodes to only consider two examples of the class. Consider the data sets in the example. We can iteratively construct decision rules for the process T instances, which is if L is false and C is false, then class H is true. For the negative instances, if L is true, then class H is false. If C is true, then class H is false. We can extend the method model rather than to find minimal perfect decision sets to look for sparse decision sets that are accurate for most of the instances. And also, we provide a trade-off between accuracy and interpretability in the sparse model. Besides the Boolean variables introduced before, we introduce variable mi to represent that example i is misclassified. For the hard crosses, we look main constraint 3, 4, and 7 to 10, and two more constraints are needed. First, if example ei is very at the leaf node j, then they agree on the class feature, or the item is misclassified. Second, every example, there should be at least one leaf node literal where it is varied or the item is misclassified. We minimize the objective of number of misclassifications plus the size of the decision set in terms of nodes multiplied by a discount factor, capital lambda, which requires that 
few misclassifications are worth the addition of one node to the decision set. Typically, we define capital lambda equals to the upper bound of small lambda multiplied by the number of examples, where the small lambdas is the regularized cost of nodes in terms of misclassifications. We can modify the definition of misclassifications in order to support a separated solution. If example EI is not classified as class C3, then class S1 misclassification. If example EI is classified as class CJ, and CJ is not equal to CI, then this class S1 misclassification per class. With the definition, we can compute the optimal decisions as per class independently, and join them together afterwards. The model for each class is identical to that of the previously introduced separating models with the following change. We include constraint 13 and modify constraint 14 to a new constraint. For every example in the class C, there should be at least one leaf literal where it's varied or the example is misclassified. The objective function is as same as the objective function in the complete sparse model. Let's talk about experimental results. To assess the proposed set beta approach, a number of state-of-the-art algorithms were additionally considered, including the heuristic methods CN2 and Ripper. They don't guarantee any optimality, and their closest competitor set based minimal decision sets, but they first optimize the number of loops and afterward the number of literals. The max set based approach in it is also considered. They minimize the number of literals given some number of loops but the only one to minimize the total number of literals. Several variants of our models are considered. For example, OPT refers to the set model, MOPT refers to the max set model or perfect decision sets. We also consider various values of lambda for the sparse models. Some of them give a higher preference to accuracy, while some others focus on size instead. The figure shows that the winner of testing scalability is Ripper, which is able to train the most considered datasets, our sparse model land circum. However, the worst approach is our perfectly accurate decision sets. Regarding the testing accuracy, our perfectly accurate decision sets beat other approaches, and our sparse decision sets ran forth. The worst accuracy is demonstrated by CN2. Finally, from the perspective of interpretability, the winner is our sparse model. It's not surprising that perfectly accurate decision sets in general tend to be larger. To conclude, the paper provides the first approach to build decision sets by directly minimizing the total number of literals required to describe them. The approach can build perfect decision sets that match the training data exactly, or sparse decision sets the trade-off accuracy on training data for size. The experiment shows that sparse decision sets embody a viable alternative to the logic-based solutions and the efficient heuristic methods. First, sparse models have high accuracy overall and they are much easier to compute. Second, a reasonable trade-off between accuracy and interpretability is considered. Third, the solutions of sparse models are easier to explain compared to other heuristic methods, like Hilper. Thanks for listening.